we've diagnosed this computer with a failing hard drive and we're going to need to replace that drive. This is an all-in-one model, so much like many laptops, there's a lot of clips and snaps and very small screws holding it together. So I would highly recommend taking your time, being patient, and using the right tools. I would also recommend a work surface that is free of any sharp objects that would scratch the screen that we're going to lay down flat. So this is a very delicate touch screen. We don't want it to get scratched or hurt. So I've got this mat here and it works really well to keep it securely stationed and let me work on it without worrying about damaging it. On this Samsung model, this is the Samsung DP700A3D, but many other Samsung all-in-ones may share the same opening technique. So I'm going to lay it down here. Also check for any peripherals, any USB devices that may be left in the ports, especially on the right side. Those are the ones that are going to matter. You don't need to remove the memory access cover unless you want to use it for leverage. We're going to do that just in case we have to do any pulling or tugging. I can do that from this memory access cover location. Also, we should talk about electrostatic discharge. So I have grounded myself by touching a metal case that has been grounded, and then I'm working on this. I'm also not walking around on carpet and generating a lot of static electricity. Computers are static sensitive, especially memory chips and other items like that. But in general, you, if you use common sense, you can avoid any problems. One thing I recommend is getting a good toolkit, especially for working on mobile phones and other devices, that will include guitar picks and spudgers. But if you don't have a guitar pick or a spudger or other tools like this that you can use, this tool is a spudger. If you don't have tools like this that you can use, um, you can also use a credit card. So I'm going to start by removing the two screws on the corners of the bottom. Those are the main screws that you have to take out to remove this, this case, and the rest is actually held in place just by clips. Okay, now that we have that done, the two sides and the two top clips are running across the top and they hold it in place. So you need to work from a location. I generally recommend starting from the left side and open those clips. By pushing and pushing back, you can get a little bit of leverage and a little bit of room. Again, these guitar picks are very thin and they help. And just push inward and you'll feel where those clips are. Once you get that, try to work your way to give a little bit of pressure downward. You see how I'm pulling downward? That's going to relieve those top clips that are holding the top on and then pull towards the left. So this is the location of the failed hard drive. I'm going to move the camera here so you can see it better. And we're going to go through the process of replacing that hard drive with the solid state drive. Make sure to keep these smaller screws available to you in a spot. There are two different kinds and two different sizes of screws here that we're going to be dealing with on just the hard drive alone. So these are the smaller of the two. That will happen where you're going to lose one. I'm going to wait until I can lift that cable off. And this is cap on tape. So you can lightly do that and I'm gonna lift this cable up and see if I can see that screw that just fell down. This is the SATA power and data cable so you're gonna to want to take that off. Okay, so I had to reset the machine to get to that screw that fell out. Be very careful when you're doing this. 
the hard drive, as you can see here, has these screws on the side. These screws on the side This underneath here to catch any of the screws. They come out. These screws on the side here are going to be transferred to your new hard drive and they are slightly larger. So when you look at these screws compared to the other ones, they're going to be slightly larger. And this is the Samsung model that you can see here that went bad. It's not a bad hard drive, a momentous drive, uh, looks like one terabyte. It's a decent size hard drive, but it's just failed after about six years. There's no rhyme or reason or special date that hard drives go bad on. I've seen many last up to 20 years. So in this case, we're going to put this hard drive caddy down, and that is the SATA data cable and power cable locations. It's interesting the power is larger, but um, we're going to put this on and we're going to reinstall those same screws. They have, for vibration dampening, a little bit of blue thread locker on them. To make sure they don't back out during shipping or transport, which is very important. But that make, might make it feel like it's cross-threading or it's not threading properly. Just drive them home. Okay, so there is the solid state hard drive in its caddy. We'll remove this cover that we put over temporarily. And this feeds underneath. So you're gonna have to work underneath here and attach it to the bottom of the drive, like so. I'm trying to be extra delicate with these cables because I don't wanna have to dig into this computer any deeper than I have to. And now I'm going to put very carefully those four smaller screws back in. And I'm not tightening them all the way down until I get at least two of them in in a line so I know that we're gonna have some room here because the last thing you want is a screw hole that doesn't fit. Looks good. And these little tiny screws, you don't have to crank them down. They're not holding a lot of weight. And there's four of them, so just nice and snug. Okay, that is the solid state drive replacement. I'm gonna go ahead and put this piece of tape back over here, keep this out of the way. And just a visual inspection of the board before I close everything up. Looks good. So the SSD is in and this machine is a rocket, but we still have some work to do. The CPU fan right here is covered in dust. And if I were to put this thing back together as it is now, that dust could accumulate even more and more and start to cause the CPU to overheat. Now, I would normally recommend using canned compressed air. That stuff can get expensive, so I have an air compressor and I'll show you how to use that. So if you have an air compressor, make sure you don't have it cranked all the way up. It didn't take much air pressure for this dust to accumulate here. It's not gonna take a lot to blow it off. The other thing that I see people do all the time, and it scares me, I learned it in my first electronics class, is not to rev up these fans that are very delicate on very delicate bearings with too much air pressure. So if you hit them with too much air pressure, they spin around and a ton of um, pressure is exerted on those bearings laterally and it will cause them to fail. And so maybe a month and maybe a year down the road, that bearing will start to fail and you'll hear the CPU fans start making a lot of noise. So, Regulate your air pressure down to about 45 PSI and make sure you just put your hand on the uh, CPU fan or your finger on the CPU fan. Now I'm being very careful to get into the cooling fins here. Uh, 
I'm going to turn the fan 180 degrees and I'm going to hit it again. Now that's clean. So there you go. Now we have a new solid state hard drive. We have a very clean dust free case and we're going to put the case back on. Another thing to remember about this is that these tabs are very delicate. If you break these tabs off, good luck finding another one of these. So when you go to put this lid back on, make sure you work from the top, then the right, and then to the left. Also make sure you don't have any peripherals still stuck in any of these ports over here. That could make it very difficult to get through. So I'm gonna engage the top. Firmly engage the top. Firmly engage the right side. and then the left. Be very careful that there are no seams and no gaps in this seamless design. Perfect. Now I'm gonna add in two more screws at the bottom that we took out originally. And the final screw on the memory cover. Takes the very smallest Phillips. And this system is done. It's ready to go back to my friend. So to recap, we've learned how to diagnose a failing hard drive. We've learned how to protect our data and copy it or mirror it to a solid state drive. To take that solid state drive and install it in the computer, how to test that the computer is working, and how to put it all back together. So this machine is ready to go back to its owner, and hopefully you're ready to tackle your computer project. I'm John with TheNetGuy.com. Thanks for watching. So I just had to show you the difference in performance. This is sped up 800% and that time down there is minutes and seconds. So it would literally take over two minutes for the machine to boot up before where you could log in. Two minutes and 20 seconds to be exact. And here is the after. just nine seconds. So yeah, you can see an incredible difference in speed. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end of my video. If you liked what you saw here, do me a solid. Hit the like button down below. If you really want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And if you want YouTube to actually let you know they're there, hit the bell. I would love to show you some more items. We've got upcoming videos on home automation, how to use Alexa, and other really cool tips and technology tricks for real people.